our house needs downpipes. Now the ones in our downloaded content are good, but we can make them better. I'm going to show you the difference between model and symbolic lines, and how to get them to stretch along with our model elements. Let's dive in. Let's click on the component button and load a family. That'll bring us to this folder. Let's go to New Zealand, components, and down here in 74 plumbing, and we're going to choose the circular downpipe NZ. Now the insertion point of this family is going to be the face of the cladding, so I'm just going to click and place that, hit escape two times, and then select it again, and then I'm going to click edit family. Now this already has a black material, which is a bit much, but let's go to the reference level, and this is not what we saw in plan. What I want to see is a black circle that's going to represent the downpipe itself, and then a gray dashed line that is actually going to highlight what is happening above our floor plan. We're going to have to set up a new line type and actually make a new line pattern so that we can actually see a dashed line in a floor plan. So first things first, let's go to Manage and go over to Line Patterns. I've got a few line patterns to start with, but they're all the wrong pattern for what I want to do. I'm going to click on New, and we're going to call the Shortest to Dash. I'm going to click on this box and then click the down arrow and select Dash. Now, if it's a dash, I have to put a value in, and ideally what I would actually want is a 0.1, but if you try to click somewhere else and accept that, it's going to say that the length of the dash needs to be 0.53, which sucks. So I have to go 0.53, accept that, and now I have to put a space in, 0.53 as well, and this will make the shortest dash. And so it's just going to take these two and repeat them. Click OK. Now you can see I've got a much tighter dash than a bunch of the other ones that are showing up here. Click OK. Now still in the Manage tab, I'm going to click on Object Styles. Now logically, you would think it would go under Annotation because we're just making lines, but it's not. So we're going to stay in Model Objects. We're going to click on Subcategories. Now the naming convention that I went with is the line weight, the color, the pattern, and a, desc a descriptor of the pattern. Click OK. I'm going to change the pattern to our shortest dash, and we're going to change this color to uh, a gray. Uh, actually, let's make it a light gray. Click OK. Align weight stays as one, and we're good. Now if I come over to the Create tab and click on Model Line, I can see that I've got my dash gray line and my rainwater downpipes line. We'll use both of these. Now this is a 3D line element that shows up in every single view, and while that sounds nice, it's not actually what we'd want to go for, because if we see this model element in 3D or in elevation, we're already going to be seeing the downpipe, so we don't actually need an extra line showing up on our ground floor level, or whatever plane that we actually put this on. So we're actually going to go hit Escape, and we're going to choose Annotate and go Symbolic Line. I'm going to choose my dashed gray shortest projection line. I'm going to pick this Pick Lines tool and make sure this lock is turned on. And the reason why I'm going to draw these first is because I want them to be showing up behind my uh, solid line for the downpipe itself. So this is the pick point for the face of the cladding, this is the part of the downpipe that's going all the way down, and then this is the pipe, part of the pipe that's at the top. I'm going to choose this line, go to the center point of this circle, come down to here, and Make sure that this snaps to the edge of that circle as well, using that triangle for the midpoint. And do the same thing over here, come down and click on that one. Now I can hit Escape, I can go to Annotate, come back here, and go to Downpipes, Projection Cut, pick the pick line, and I'm going to select these. And you can see how that line went in front of this dashed line. Uh, I did it the other way around before, and I didn't quite like how it looked. So. If you want to preview how this is going to look inside the project, let's change this to 1 to 100, which is a pretty typical floor plan scale. The last thing we have to do is click on this and let's change its visibility parameters. So if I click on this button here, the visibility graphics overrides, and I just turn it off in plan in RCP. Click OK. And then let's pick this preview visibility off and turn that on. And now this, without that annotation, this is what we'll see in our floor plan. This is as tight as we could get this dash line to show up at a 1 to 100, which is better than all of the other dash lines in the default project. Let's save this family. Let's put this into our families. I think we're going to use this downpipe in the future, so I'm just going to give these ones with my initial and call it downpipe circular. Save. Now I can load into project and close. I'm going to do this because I'm confident that that worked. 
save the project. Now this is a new family because I changed the name. If I hit the space bar a couple times, we can see how this rotates. And it's nice that we can see what's actually going on before we place it. So I can click and paste and delete this other one. Let's actually go through and delete that family. It's probably in the plumbing fixtures. It is not. If you need to figure out what kind of family something is, you can go edit family, come up here and click on family category and parameters. It's a generic model. Okay, let's cancel that and close this. Let's expand the generic models and find our down part pipe circular. Delete that. And now I want to set this off from the grid line by a ooh, nice 200. Let's go to the elevation. Now we need to change these numbers and I'll show you how these numbers are actually set up. So if I go to the left elevation, because if you go to the front, you're not going to see much. I know that these dimensions actually live in the left elevation. I can pull this down so you can see it. The height of the rainwater pipe defines the actual whole height of this thing. So if I change the height of this to 2600, it's just going to move all of those elements straight down. I'm going to undo that. Uh, the head depth. So if I change this number, I can change it to 150, and the whole thing actually moves up. That's because this dimension is also locked and defines the slope of the downpipe. So I can change this one to 200, and it's going to adjust this. Now the top offset, that's pretty obvious, but make sure that you recognize that it's actually using the face of the point that we placed it from to the center point of the rainwater head. This will be useful when we check some dimensions later. Now if I updated these dimensions and actually wanted to keep them, I could load these into the project and overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. Click OK, and now you can see that these dimensions actually changed relative to what we did. I'm not going to want to see this for right now, so I'm just going to hide this temporarily. That's why I use the glasses. If I take a quick dimension, this is 2700. I can change this really quick to 2700, move my mouse out, and that should accept it. If I change this to thin lines, I've actually got this up above a little bit, 7.1. So I am going to change this to 2710, just so that these overlap a little bit. And now I want to know where this center point is. So let's use this measure between two reference points. And this is 74.2. This is a 75 millimeter pipe, which is fine. So I'm going to pick this point and find the center point of this. Come over to the face. Make sure that that's actually going in a straight line. You can see how it's kind of sloped. There we go. This is 446.1. It's not a great number, but this is a type parameter, so we have to go edit type and change this to 446. I'm not going to put in 0.1 because that would drive me crazy. And this does overlap a little bit. Let's actually just change that number to 450 and click OK. Let's tighten these numbers up a little bit. I'm going to change this to 120. Click apply. Yeah, that's better. And the head depth, I'm going to change this to 100. Click apply. Let's change these from plastic black to plastic. Check the appearance. Use render appearance. Click OK and OK. Now if we look at them in 3D, that's not bad. Let's go to the ground floor plan. Select this. And I'm going to mirror this one with the draw axis. And I'm going to pick the midpoint of this wall and just mirror that straight across. Now if I come to look at this in 3D, I can see that this downpipe is taking care of all the rain that's going to land on this roof and this roof. We're assuming that this is okay with turning the corner. Uh, I should probably look up the local building code and actually make sure that that's acceptable. And then this one is going to be taking care of half of the rain that's landing on this one. It is just wise to sp spread the difference. So let's go back to our ground floor plan. Let's copy this one. Move it down to the end. Let's just put a dimension on here real quick and select it so that this number turns blue. And now we can type in 200. And now we've got an even offset from either side. And I can mirror this one at the midpoint of this wall. And that's going to show up here. Now I just want to prove to you that these symbolic lines actually move with the element itself. So if I click on edit type, change the offset at the top to 700, click OK. That's all just going to stretch out from there. These lines are going to stay where they are. If I change the rainwater pipe diameter, let's just make this something egregious, like 150, click OK. All of these lines, since they're locked to those model elements, they'll move with them and adjust, and 
we've got something that accurately represents our information. I'm going to click OK and undo that twice so that I have the numbers that I was working with before. If I come to my 3D view, you can see that all I see is this 3D model element and I don't have any extra lines. And there you have it, downpipes. My name is Jesse. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next one.